The Iron Lords once pledged our lives to protect humanity. We sought a great treasure from our long forgotten past. We thought it would save us. Instead, it turned against us. One by one we fell, until at last we sealed it away. But what we buried long ago has been unearthed by an army of scavengers. The Iron's Bane has returned. I will finish this. I will honour the memory of the Iron Lords, but I cannot do it alone. For the city's enemies to fall, you must rise. Welcome back Guardians, today we are going to discuss the lore surrounding the rise of iron, beginning with the history of the Iron Lords and ending in the present day as we approach the newest threat to the city. I will cover the victories at Six Fronts and Twilight Gap, the Iron Lord patrols led from Felwinter Peak, the creation of the Iron Banner, the last remaining Iron Lord, Lord Saladin, the Iron Wolves, the new threat, Siva and finish with some speculation about Jaggy's host, which may have some greater significance to the Rise of Iron storyline. I'll use information from the Grimmel cards, item descriptions, and more recently the Rise of Iron reveal stream. New Destiny artwork will be returning next week, however you are still able to vote for your favourite artwork on my last video, the link is in the description, and you can also show your support and download the images on my Patreon page. Lastly, a shout out to DBM Gamer, who is working on a similar lore video to this one. His channel link is in the description below. This is Mylan Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny lore video. Let's begin with the Battle of Six Fronts. The Battle of Six Fronts occurred in the earliest days of the city, and was the first major and coordinated attack on the city. The attack was led by the Fallen. The city decisively repelled the attack with the assistance of four Titan Orders. We are relatively certain about the name of three of the Titan Orders, which include Pilgrim Guard, Firebreak and Chain. The following Titan Marks confirms the involvement of these Titan Orders. Mark of the Gatekeepers reads, the Pilgrim Guard was the first Titan Order formed to protect the refugees entering the fledgling Alas City. Mark of the Sortie reads, At Six Fronts, two Firebreak Commanders led a sortie beyond the walls. They reclaimed five miles of scorched land from the Fallen. Mark of the Chain reads, Even at Six Fronts, the city's darkest hour, some Titans broke orders, but the Chain prevailed. Whilst I believe the Pilgrim Guard, Firebreak and the Chain are three of the four Titan Orders involved with the defence of the city, the fourth and final Titan Order can be debated. The Stoneborn is one option. The Stoneborn relic reads, A piece of the city's first wall, carved into the shape of the sigil of the Titan Stoneborn Order. Considering this order has a piece of the city's first wall, it implies that they were present during the earliest days of the city, and consequently were likely present during the Battle of Six Fronts. However, another order is equally plausible, which is the First Pillar Titan Order. The First Pillar mark reads, The many strategic victories of the First Pillar Order are not without cost. Whilst there is no direct reference to the Battle of Six Fronts, Considering they are called the First Pillar, you could assume they were present during the early construction of the wall and therefore present during the Battle of Six Fronts. The Sunbreakers are also a Titan Order, and I also came across a reference to another Titan Order called the Sun Legion. The Titan Helmet reads, The Sun Legion Order donated this helmet for the use of newly reborn Titans. I believe that the Stoneborn or the First Pillar Titan Orders are the most likely option for the Fourth Titan Order that defended the city at Six Fronts. Whilst we may not know the exact Titan Orders that assisted the defence of the city, what we do know is that it was not just the Titan Orders that defended the city. The Iron Lords also played a large role in this victory. The Iron Banner Grimoire card reads, The Lords of Iron ancient warriors from the city's founding have no time for molly coddling. 
The city remembers Felwinter and Jolda, Skori and Timur, Radagas and Gileon, and the others, for the invincible patrols during six fronts, and the wall building. The Iron Banner asks Guardians to live up to that legend. It is interesting that this card says patrols during six fronts, meaning that the Iron Lords did not sit behind the city's walls, but rather pushed into enemy territory to secure a victory. What is also interesting is that the Iron Lords are described in pairs, Felwinter and Jolda, Skori and Timur, Radagas and Gileon. I had not paid much attention to this previously because I had always thought that there were only nine Iron Lords, meaning that they could not patrol in pairs with an odd number. However, with the new information from the Rise of Iron livestream, Lord Saladin is confirmed as an Iron Lord bringing the total number of Iron Lords to an even 10. Destiny the Game website says this about the Iron Lords. Before the city and the vanguards, there were Iron Lords. Blessed by the Traveler's Light, these brave warriors dedicated themselves to defending humanity and rebuilding a lost civilization. From their mountain fortress on Felwinter Peak, the Iron Lords ranged across the planet, battling the darkness and protecting the survivors of the Collapse. They did great things, but then they encountered an enemy they could not defeat. Now Lord Saladin, the last Iron Lord, honours the memories of his lost brothers and sisters, and he waits, because he knows that someday the thing that destroyed the Iron Lords will return. We can conclude that the Iron Lords were based at Felwinter Peak, and it seems that they completed patrols in pairs to assist survivors of the Collapse i.e. they did not just assist the city, but would assist the other outer settlements and other survivors who never made it to the city. It just so happens that when the city was in need during the Battle of Six Fronts, the Iron Lords came to their aid. If this is true, the Iron Lords are actually quite separate and neutral to the city, which may explain why Lord Saladin is not a permanent fixture in the tower. For this reason, I do not think that any of the Iron Lords were actually part of the four Titan Orders that defended the city during Six Fronts. In fact, most people will argue that not all of the Iron Lords are Titans, and that the Iron Banner gear suggests that Felwinter, Scory, and Timur are Warlocks, Ephrodite, Gileon, and Perrin are Hunters, and Jolda, Radagast, and Silimar are Titans. So the Iron Lords were based at Felwinter Peak, assisted the Titan Orders to defend the city at the Battle of Six Fronts, assisted survivors of the Collapse outside the city walls through their patrols. But then, what happened? We know from the Warlock artifact, Seagoth's Head, that the Iron Lords turned upon each other. The item reads, Thought we formed the banner to fight the darkness, not ourselves. Just don't bode well, is all I'm saying. Gileon. We also know that Radagast's blade had been broken, signifying the defeat of the Iron Lords. The item reads, So as long as the sword was whole, the Iron Banner could not be broken. Obviously, the Rise of Iron DLC will uncover the fate of the Iron Lords. However, from the information we already have, I speculate that Siva has something to do with the demise of the Iron Lords not only defeating them, but turning them against each other. If you go to Bundy's website, you will see a short script play out, which is what I read from in the introduction to this video. The Iron Temple is in the background and the script reads, The Iron Lords once pledged our lives to protect humanity. We sought a great treasure from our long forgotten past. We thought it would save us. Instead, it turned against us. One by one, we fell until at last we sealed it away. But what we buried long ago has been unearthed by an army of scavengers. We know that the word scavengers refers to the fallen, and we know that the fallen have uncovered a technology called Siva. Hence it seems logical to conclude that the Iron Lords were also trying to access this technology, hoping to use it to defeat the darkness. However, it turned against them, with all of the Iron Lords falling except Lord Saladin, who managed to seal it. I believe that when the Iron Lords access Siva, 
Somehow Siva, or whoever controls Siva, influenced the Iron Lords and turned them against each other. This may be reinforced by the description of Siva on Bungie's website, which says, Siva, a golden age of breakthrough in self-assembling, self-replicating nanotechnology. It also says, this area near the Cosmodrone has been quarantined for centuries. Now the devil splicers have broken through the walls, dug deep into the earth and found technology of almost limitless power. The splicers are using this forbidden technology, Siva, to transform the region to fit their twisted desires. Destiny of the Game website reveals that the fallen splicers are not new things, saying every fallen house has splicers, body hackers and bioengineers. Remember that dregs can grow their arms back? I wonder whether every fallen house has splicers that they use to regrow these limbs. However, in this case, the House of Devils have now discovered the ultimate technology, Siva, and they are using this technology to become machine gods. Whilst it appears that Siva technology is giving increased power to the Devil Splicers to combine flesh and machine, I get the impression that the Fallen are not in full control of their newfound bodies and power. Bungie's website says, Fallen mutants now scavenge the tombs of the Golden Age, and the plague they have unearthed in the waste is more dangerous than even they understand. It also says, hidden in the Cosmodrone lies a true source of the Siva outbreak. Siva is spoken about as if it is an infection, spreading like a plague, and that the Fallen do not fully understand this technology, which is one of the reasons why I don't think the Fallen are in full control. Secondly, Siva is described as a self-assembling, self-replicating nanotechnology, which makes me think of sentient nanobots, or possibly that someone is controlling Siva. And as the website says, the raid will reveal the true source of the Siva outbreak. Whilst we do not know what the true source of the Siva outbreak is, what we can be certain of is Siva is connected in some way to the war mines. The trailer appeared to show a war mined bunker, and so this has multiple possibilities. Siva may be in control of a war mind, a war mind may be controlling Siva, or the Iron Lords used the war mind to seal and safeguard the technology. Furthermore, the connection between Siva and the war mines is emphasized with its capitalization. A word completely capitalized is something that does not commonly occur in the Grimoire cards with the exception of the Rasputin cards. Rasputin's protocols are capitalized, such as Veluspa and Yuga. These protocols also have metaphoric meanings. Veluspa relates to a Nordic poem, and Yuga relates to a Hindu term. Interestingly, if you Google Siva, the top search will be a Hindu term, where Siva is one of the three major deities of Hinduism. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Siva, the destroyer or transformer. A coincidence that Siva is transforming the fallen and is also a deity of transformation and destruction in Hinduism? The similarities between Siva and other Warmind protocols, I believe, further proves that Siva is connected to the Warminds in some way. Of the Iron Lords, all of them were killed except Lord Saladin, who I assume managed to seal Siva away. However, Lord Saladin knows that it will return as reinforced on Death in the Game website, which reads, Now Lord Saladin, the last Iron Lord, honours the memories of his lost brothers and sisters, and he waits, because he knows that someday the thing that destroyed the Iron Lords will return. This is what I believe to be the real reason to why Lord Saladin created the Iron Banner to prepare guardians for the return of Siva, this new threat, this plague. We've always assumed that the Iron Banner was to prepare guardians to face the darkness. However, some Grimoire cards allude to a different war, without mentioning the darkness. The Iron Banner card reads, Lord Saladin, once Shaxx's mentor, runs an Iron Banner tournament to strip Crucible weaklings of their illusions and prepare them for a battle with no concept of fair play. The Iron Banner tests a guardian. 
and the Guardian's gear in a definitive, relentless mock war. The iron-hued bounty reads, The Iron Banner will forge a legion, the city's brightest line of defence. Lord Saladin If Lord Saladin is preparing Guardians to face Siva, preparing the next generation of Iron Lords through trial in the Iron Banner, does anyone else know about the impending threat? The consensus, the vanguard, the speaker, or the factions? Whilst we cannot be sure if the fate of the Iron Lords and the knowledge of this technology is common knowledge within the tower, we do know that after the Battle of Six Fronts, Lord Saladin was a mentor to both Zavala and Shax. Saladin was also in charge of the city's defences during the Battle of Twilight Gap, and during this time he's described as a hero. Shax was also a hero during this battle because he led a counter-attack that pushed the Fallen away from the city walls. I've always speculated that the relationship between Shax and Saladin was strained from the Battle of Twilight Gap because maybe the counter-attack led by Shax had not been approved by Saladin, the leader of the city defences, and Shax disobeyed direct orders, leading his combat frames beyond the wall. Despite Saladin and Shax being praised for their heroism, many Guardians were killed at the Battle of Twilight Gap. And Fiesel Crux, a gunsmith, used the armour of the Fallen Guardians to forge Galahorn. Considering Galahorn is returning in the Rise of Iron, I assume we will be given more information about the Battle of Twilight Gap, and maybe even some more information to why Shax and Saladin's relationship is now strained. I also find it very interesting that Lord Shax has been given the title of a Lord, despite not being an Iron Lord. As I previously mentioned, it is said that Lord Saladin is the last Iron Lord. So potentially this is maybe why their relationship is strained. Maybe Saladin does not believe Shax deserves the title of Lord, and Shax has no idea about the sacrifices the Iron Lords made to seal Siva away. Before finishing, I do need to mention the Iron Wolves. How do the Iron Wolves fit into this whole picture? What was obvious during the livestream was that there was zero mention of the Iron Wolves. Despite the trailer featuring wolves and despite screenshots showing wolves in the Iron Temple. The story of the Iron Wolves is thought to be told by the Wolfswood Hunter Cloak, Wolfswood Warlock Bond and the Wolfswood Titan Mark. They read, In our darkest hour, nine Iron Wolves emerged from the ruins. Under a red dawn, the Iron Wolves gathered beneath the Iron Wood, and beneath its branches, the Iron Wolves forged an unbreakable oath. Because it reads that the Iron Wolves emerged from the ruins and formed an unbreakable oath, I always thought that the Iron Wolves came after the Iron Lords, that the Iron Wolves learned from the mistakes of the Iron Lords and forged an unbreakable oath. However, this is never confirmed, and I can only hope that the story of the Iron Wolves will be explained and expanded upon in the Rise of Iron. I believe this will be the case because the screenshots of the Iron Temple on Felwinter Peak, the mausoleum of the Iron Lords, showed the Iron Wolves gathering below what I assume is the Iron Wood Tree. So I assume this was the location where the Iron Wolves gathered to form the Unbreakable Oath. Lastly, I wanted to leave you with some speculation I came across that I could not quite make sense of. However, it had a number of potential links to this new storyline. I'm speaking about Jaggy's host. Mark of the Lost Seven says, One by one, the ghosts of Jaggy's host return to the city. If they knew of their guardian's fate, they would not reveal it. Where did Jaggy's hosts travel? Where did they go? Mark of Jaggy's host reads, Jaggy's host was last seen marching south of the Cosmodrome, towards the shores of the Caspian Sea. Hmm. South of the Cosmodrome, south of Russia, towards the Caspian Sea. Well, we now know this area. This area is thought to be the Plague Lands. Jaggy's host did not return from the Plague Lands, but the ghosts returned to the city. The Ghost Fragment Titan card reads, The time ghosts from Jaggy's host came back without them. Remember? They got in that fight at some point east of the Caspian. Seven ghosts 
damn near silent, buzzing with some sort of corruption, drifting back to the tower, one by one, scared the speaker well enough. Maybe the Iron Lords were not the only ones to be defeated by the plague by Siva. Were the ghosts that returned to the city from Jaggy's host already infected? To add further fuel to the fire, the Iron Banner Iron Regalia gear was initially called something else. It was called Plate of the Seven, Gloves of the Seven, Helm of the Seven, and Greaves of the Seven. I believe this gear references the Lost Seven, Jaggy's host that ventured into the Plaguelands and suffered the same fate as the Iron Lords. And just like the sacrifice of the Iron Lords, Jaggy's host was honoured through naming the Iron Banner gear. And then for some reason, Bungie removed that naming and it was replaced with Iron Regalia. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the phrase Siva Ghost. To speculate that the seven ghosts returning from the plague lands are already infected by Siva technology. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.